All right, hello everyone. Uh, today we are gonna do the rendering of this net. So I went ahead and re-rendered or re-created uh, it and made it a little bit different. I just added more uh, divisions, but it is exactly the same technique as we used in the previous video. You can also apply it to pretty much any polygon shape and you can get some pretty neat results. Um, I got a really neat result earlier by using the circle. Anyway, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to render this in Redshift. So let's create a new camera. So you can just click on there and we can adjust it. All right. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is if you click on Render View, it'll create the um, nodes that you need to render uh, IPR and Redshift. So let's do that. All right, so the nodes will be created for us. Um, it's gonna look a bit weird because there is no uh, proper light. Let's add that real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a single RS light and we're gonna get an interesting result this way. So we can actually interactively move this in the uh, viewport or semi-interactively. But let's go ahead and move that back and move it up a bit so you can't really see it. And then let's see what axis it's on. All right, we need to rotate it on the Z. So let's rotate it down a bit. And that's lit pretty decently. So now that we have done that, let's uh, turn on in the redshift drop. Let's turn on global illumination and just set both to brute force. It'll make it look a little bit more realistic. You don't have to do it, but I think it looks better that way. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go into my system. I have an RTX card, so I'm going to turn on optics RT. Um, it will speed up rendering if you have an RTX card. And so... I'm going to go back to my OBJ and the next thing we should do is actually the material. So I'm going to switch over to the matte context and do RS material builder and then just call this something like net. All I did for my main render is actually all I did was made like a uh, brownish brownish color a little bit darker less saturated a little more tan actually and we can just go up a level and just drag and drop this let's try resetting all right much better you can actually see it now so let's turn the roughness up mostly all the way all right that's better and so what we're going to want to do, I just actually realized if you're not seeing this wireframe, you need to go to the Redshift tab on your object and then turn from strands, turn render objects as strands. Um, I will put a note in this for earlier to make sure that you do that. And yeah, so. Now that we have this, let's go to the vault. We're going to make a volumetric. So um, you can do in the out context and go to the redshift drop. If you go to volumetric, you can turn that on. Um, you're not going to see anything because you have to actually um, tell the light to contribute to it. So if you scroll down in the light tab, you can turn up the contribution all the way up so now we're getting a um now we're actually seeing the volume the next thing that i'm gonna do is change the light from an area to a spotlight this will give more pronounced god rays or crepuscular rays whatever you want to call them um and that works pretty well and then let's play around with the spotlight let's make it a little bit wider and then maybe play around with the camera angle a bit. I need to click on that and then lock it. So when you move around, it actually updates. Just adjust it a little bit until you find a, until you find a view that you think looks good. All right, I think that looks pretty cool actually. 
So, um, <clears throat> so there's two ways we can do this. Um, and what we can do is if you go back to the out and then go to this volume panel, we can tint the fog to a nice, nice bluish color, sort of mimic, trying to mimic the ocean is what I uh, did for the render in this thumbnail. It won't be exactly the same uh, because I'm setting up from scratch again, but it should be close enough. So now that we have that, um, it's a pretty good start. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of the color anymore. I think I need to change it a little bit. So let's go back to the mat, go to the net, and let's make it a bit brighter, I think. Um, and just play around with it. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is on this shader, let's add, go to this weight intensity um, for the backlighting and translucency. And I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and make the color something very noticeable like, like orange. And then we can tone it back just a little bit by making it a bit darker. We can also just change the weight. And I think that gives a decent result. It's a much cheaper way to do a subsurface-ish look without having the expense of doing real subsurface scattering. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna add like little particles that are floating around in the water or what seems to be what would be water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pause the uh, render view and minimize it. And so let's create a box. Open that up and let's just scale it uniform and just kind of make it until it encapsulates a pretty large area. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is do uh, points from volume. Hook that up. It's gonna be a bit slow. And let's just increase the point separation so there's not quite as many. And you can just play around with it. So we're going to want to get rid of this like really rigid grid pattern. And to do that, let's go ahead and change the jitter scale. I'll turn it all. I'm just going to turn it all the way up. Um, yeah, it looks good enough. All right. So now what we're going to want to do is to add an attribute randomize. Turn that on. And instead of using um, CD, let's just put in V for velocity. Uh, the reason I'm gonna do this is because I would like to add a random velocity for motion blur. So if we go back to the out now, we can go to motion blur and then turn that on. Let's bring our render view back up and refresh it. Let's see. And we have to turn render objects as particles or we will not see that. And let's hit refresh again. There we go. These are going to look ridiculous and very large. If you would like, you could keep it that way. But um, I'm going to go ahead and change it down quite a bit. Um, point zero one's a little too small. Let's try maybe... 0, 5. Ooh, that's nice. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is make a material for the bubbles or um, whatever, the particles. So let's do RS Material Builder. And we'll just make it some debris. And I'm going to turn up the weight all the way to 1 on that. Um, and just assign it to these particles. Let's refresh. 
All right, that looks fine. Um, let's change the color to be brighter. And maybe, I don't know, just add a little hint of a green or something. Doesn't really matter, whatever color. And we'll just boost that all the way up to one. And then we also, we do not need any specular at all. There's no point in rendering it, you won't see it. You can keep if you like, but no guarantees that it'll make a difference. All right, so now we need the motion blur to uh, properly work. So let's figure that out. All right, so we're back. Um, my Houdini crashed while recording, so I had to recreate some stuff. Um, and I figured out why the motion blur wasn't working. So when you do, after you put the after you put the attribute randomize inside of the debris particles, um, let's go to out. And then with the motion blur, you have to make sure to enable uh, instances and particle blur for it to actually work. And so you can just adjust the, um, You can just adjust the numbers you want. So for the directions, I just put it uh, 0 to 2 on all of the three axes. And that is it. I'm going to change the volume again and turn it back on. And make it a nice, nice ocean blue. And let's hit render. Way too big. All right, so now you can tell that it's actually working properly. You can see the motion blur. The color got reverted as well, unfortunately, on the net. So I will readjust that as well. Something way more desirable because that is not a great color. Let's change the change that color, lower the weight a bit. And make the base color a little more. And let's just get rid of that reflection. We don't need it. All right, that's better. Make sure to save. And really, you can just adjust the lighting, adjust the amount of volume. So let's go back over to the volume. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make this slightly greener because um, it seems a little bit more accurate to what you would see under the ocean. And we can just change the amount of scattering. So I had quite a fair amount of scattering in the thumbnail render. Um, and I also had some more particles than I currently do. So let's go over to the to that box and I'll make the particle separation a bit a bit less and I'll stop it and I'll save and re-render. Still not enough, so I'll increase it. And I'll keep increasing it. All right, that's a lot, and they're also too large. So I will go back to the particle scale, and I need to change it. Change it back to 0, 0.5. Mm, let's try try point one yeah that looks good I like that so that just adds some of like the ocean movement to it
All right, so that's basically it. We could also, if you wanted to, add a actual texture to this netting so it looks a bit more like actual net. Um, in my render, I actually didn't even do that. I left it as a single matte color. Um, what helped was to use bokeh and then have the up close stuff out of focus. And that really helped sell the look of the net. And you can just adjust this radius a bit. It's going to be way too high. All right, that looks better. Um, so now we get more cinematic look and uh, it takes away the ability to see the what should be detail there. And then you could just throw in a lot um, Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So that's pretty much how I did that. Um, and you can just tweak the colors as much as you want. Um, all up to you. It's all just a personal choice and decision on what you like, how it looks. Um, could change how the light looks. You can do anything. Um, but that's just roughly how I got my rent made my render. I hope this was useful, um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it down below, and I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. Um, I've created a Patreon where I will be putting premium tutorials if you would like. Um, I don't have any up there right now, so no pressure. Um, but if you'd like to support me, join my Patreon. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. See you next time.